Hello my friends, Luminar Neo released a new software update and this is version 1.8.0. Before I'll show you what's new in this version, I just want to remind you that I sort my YouTube videos into playlists and my Luminar Neo playlist has currently 116 video tutorials. So if you're new to this channel or new to Luminar Neo, please go check out that uh, playlist. I went through every single tool in this program, explaining it with lots of examples and many, many editing tutorials. Now, after I show you what's new in this uh, new version, I will do a full edit. We will edit this image that I took a few days ago in my backyard. We will take this image from this to this. So stick around to see this full edit. Now let's go into the software update. The first thing that is new is this uh, preview slider over here. If you click on this slider, now you can see this is my image before, this is the after, before and after. So that is pretty, pretty handy. Now the most exciting update of the software is previews into presets. So if I go to presets now, and I hover over these presets, you will see, we can see a, a preview. So there is this one, as I hover over it, I'm not clicking anything, I'm just hovering to check them out. So you can see now your presets, you can just hover over it and see what they would look like before you commit to it. We will find that the same kind of hovering previews now, if you go into mood and you can do this with lots, so as you can see, I can hover over these lots and we can see the preview without committing to anything. So this is also very, very handy. Another place where we found these hovering previews, which I think it's super, super uh, useful, it is into layers blend mode. So let's add a new layer and let's say we want to add some bokeh to this background. I will choose this layer with the bokeh. If I put the percentage as 100%, you see, this is what it looks like. Now, from my experience, I know the screen would look better like this or maybe overlay. So let's see, we're just hovering over it. This is darken, multiply, color burn, lighten, screen. Well, screen is too bright. Overlay, that one looks better. So you see, you can see the preview just by hovering over it. For this one, I would have probably choose overlay and then reduce the opacity. So just like that, we added bokeh in the background. If I hide this layer, this is the before, and then show layer, this is the after. Now I'm going to remove this. And also I am going to reset this image now to the original raw image and we'll do this full edit. Revert to original. And let's start our edit. This is a raw image. I took it, um, like I said, a few days ago. The first thing I wanna do is crop it and kind of, you know, arrange my composition a little bit. For this one, I choose a four by five crop and let's see, I'm going to make it about this size and I'm going to put the bird roughly over here into the upper left corner, maybe something like that. Great. Click enter to accept the changes. And now I want to remove this bird feeder. As you can see, my bird feeder was right there next to this uh, stick. So to remove it, you might want to be tempted of using the erase um, tool. Let's see, where is it? Erase. So if I just use the erase tool, you will see it doesn't work so well. And I hope that will work on that and make it better. So let's see, I'm going to go with erase. And as you can see, it did a terrible, terrible job. So let's reset it. And we will actually use the clone stamp tool to fix this. So I'm going to use my clone step tool. Let's make the brush a little bit bigger and I will start from here on the bottom. I'll take a sample and just kind of work my way up. Sample, keep going up. Now I'm gonna sample right from uh, right next to it and just try to remove that feeder as naturally as possible. And there you go, not too bad. Could be better, but I think for now it's good enough. We have a few spots in there, there you go. So now that we removed the feeder from it, let's work a little bit on the color. First thing I wanna do is brighten the board a little bit. 
So I will go to develop and I will increase the exposure, maybe something like that. And then with the mask, I will choose the brush. Onto the brush, I have the softness at 100, the strength at 100. And I'm just gonna paint on this bird. Make sure I stay away from the edges. I don't want any hollowing. And because I have softness at 100, it will give me a nice feathering. And you can't tell that I brightened the bird too much. So there you go. This is the before and after. The next thing I want to do, I want to bring out this uh, catch light into the eye. For that, I'll go back to develop. And this time I'll take the whites and increase them quite a bit. Then I'll go to masking. I'll take a brush. This time I'll make my brush very small and just paint on this catch light because I want to bring that one up. So this is the before and after, before and after. I can even bring it up a little bit more. So let's go to whites and just bring it up a little bit more. There you go. So we brightened the bird, we brightened the eye. So far our image, this is the before, this is the after. We are looking great. I want to add a little bit of blue to the back of this bird. Uh, this is a tufted teeth mouse. Usually they have like a bluish tone. So for that, I'll go to develop and I'll go to temperature and just take the temperature towards blue a little bit. Maybe something like that. Now it makes the whole picture terrible, but not to worry because I'll go to masking. I'll go to brush the same softness at 100, strength 100. I'll make my brush size smaller and I'll just paint on this gray part because these are the parts I wanted to make them more bloom. So just carefully paint around it just to make it a little bit more interesting. Now, obviously, you don't have to change the color of your bird, but this is the way I saw my bird when I saw it. And it's my bird. I can color it however I want. There you go. The bird looks more blue. This is the before, this is the after. Now I will go to enhance and add a little bit of accent and that just kind of brightens everything. You see, it just does something magic about it. This is the before, this is the after. I like it. Things are looking great. Go back to develop and this time maybe open up the shadows a little bit just to bring a little bit more details. And that is looking fantastic. The next thing I would like to do is go, go to landscape and add a little bit of this golden hour to just warm up the image a tiny little bit. And let's see, this is the before, this is the after. I like it, I will stick with that. For, let's see, what else do we need to do here? Now this image does have um, some noise so if I zoom in at 200%, you should never look at your images at 200%, just look at 100%. But I'm doing this so you can see it on YouTube. You see there's quite a bit of grain. So I will use the noiseless AI, click on that. And then for this image, it's recommended that I use the low setting. So let's click on low, see what it does. And there you go, it removed most of the noise. Let's see, this is the before and after before and after not too bad i'm gonna go to a hundred percent this is the way you should look at your images and i really don't see any noise or any kind of bad artifacts or anything like that so i'm happy with that i'll go to fit to screen and let's see our image let's use this handy dandy slider that we have here so this is the before this is the after before and after and I think we went a long way and I like the way it turned out. Now, when I look closely to this image, let's see if I zoom out a little bit. I think my clone cloning was kind of patchy. So let's fix that a little bit. I'll go back to my clone stamp tool and softness at 100, strength at 100. Let's try to fix this. I will take a sample from over here and just kind of paint here, maybe even make my brush a little bit bigger and just trying to soften that patchiness. I'll just keep sampling from there. Another way to remove some of that patchiness is to remove the, uh, reduce the strength to maybe around 60. And now we're just kind of blending a little bit things together. Um, this helps to get rid of some of those lines and patchiness. So at 60%, I keep sampling and just kind of blur out those 
edges and that is looking better already let's see this is our before this is after a lot more natural i don't know why i didn't notice that before but sometimes oops i meant to take a sample from there not to paint on command z and now let's see take a sample from here and maybe put it back in here and there you go this is our cloning before and after command zero to fit the screen before and after much much better now i hope this was helpful and you learned something new thank you so much for watching my name is skylar ewing and i'll see you on my next video